Ireland, and he's now lived in Canada 31 years, longer than he has lived in Ireland. So he can claim technically to be Canadian Irish. He started saving Vorians in his teens, and a Vorian, for your information, is a dinghy uh, that was shown in the Paris Boat Show in 1952. It is four meters long and uh, one and a half meters wide, and two people can sail it. And I have a picture here if you want to look later. Anyway, he started sailing them in his teens, and over the years has gone back and forth between sail and power. He's a Sail Canada Club race officer and a regional judge. John volunteers many hours to racing adjudication, including working on the race committee for Mimico Cruising Club and officiating last summer at Sail Canada's Women's Keel Boat Challenge. He's an adjunct professor and executive in residence at the Rotman School of Management at the University of Toronto, which is just down the road at 105 St. George. And I'd like to really thank John. I owe him an apology because he sent me an email uh, at least a month ago asking to have this date changed. It went into my junk mail. Why? I don't know. And so John is between, he's actually in the middle of a meeting right now. So we will give him a warm welcome. Um, thank you very much for being here today. A warm show back welcome. Here. So can you hear me? We need it. I need it. Yeah. Now, okay. It's not me. You need to turn off those um, right? The volume up. Yes. And uh, okay. Who's um? Who's who's from across the pond? Wales, Ireland, England, Scotland, Wales, anywhere? Show of hands. Show of hands. Oh yeah, bubbles. Okay. And so I say, hey, there's um Sean O'Dear, the Sam and Dunn, Happy Australia, and not English. Um, and here is, uh, this is my uh, term with three, uh, December 12th, uh, heading to Ireland. And I say, that is my, <coughs> that's my druid suit. Not a Christmas suit. You see the trees on it? That was celebrating the, sol the winter solstice, the longest, that's to celebrate the longest day, you see? Yeah, you know, on, on a couch, right? Recovering, recovering druid. So that's actually, that's not a Christmas suit. You see the trees on it and that? And look at it, look at the, 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 you know, the time all. I, I was down in uh, <coughs> Chicago, actually, just the week before that, we um, came back and wore the Milko Cruising Club. And <coughs> I was in the store buying some other stuff, and I, just, I heard my voice, I heard my name, and thought, John, John, come over here. And I, I saw that hanging there, and I thought, oh my god, it had my name on it. <laughs> it was, you know, 48.95 or something like that. Okay? You know, jacket, tie, and slacks. I mean, you couldn't go wrong with it, could you? <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm not too sure what it's made of. I kept away from, I kept away from flames every time I wore it, though. I'm not too sure. Um, yeah, the wood would have gone up. And so, yes, that's, that's a little bit of Irish that I'm going to show up here. Uh, yeah. John O'Dwyer would be mostly. And uh, yes, so the world could win <coughs> winter solstice. And so, you know, people say, what are you? And I say, well, I'm a Celt. So are the, uh, so are the Scots. Actually, there's a few uh, nations. Here is the, uh, uh, welcome. And this is, uh, this is actually, it was Diane, you see, is on the race committee with me. She's the most excellent climber. And I, got talked into this, or I had an idea for this. Uh, that seemed a good idea at the time, and I'm not too sure you can make up your own mind afterwards. I mean, it's one of those a brain fart, but um, anyway, we'll see how it goes. And, <coughs> you know, we, we, we say, uh, you don't want that fact get in the way of a good story, okay? Uh, uh, feel free to ask questions along the way. I might have the answer, but, uh, so we're going to do some bits of, so there's the Celtic nations and the flags of the Celtic nations. You probably don't recognize some of them. <coughs> but there's, now, does anybody know Billy Connolly? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right? 
Okay. Sir Billy. Sir Billy, yes. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, Sir Billy. Well, and um, so he tells a great one, and I can't, I can't tell the story anyway nearly as good as he does it, but he talks about, um, they don't know where the Celts come from, actually, even at this stage. They, they think maybe northern Turkey, uh, but I don't know. All we do know is they came out of the Mediterranean. So as Billy would say, yeah, Mediterranean, blue skies, warm waters, sunny. They head off west and they get to the Atlantic. And you know, Billy, Billy says it about it, he's not too sure uh, if his ancestors were the uh, sharpest knife in the Celtic draw. But even, but all the Celts, they go out and, and they hit the Atlantic, what do they do? They go north. Right? And that was the first, first serious one. <laughs> Yeah, so they head north, and then, you know, they started getting off the boats. So Galicia and Astoria, you know, saw a bit of land, getting a bit full of people. So they okay, we're good here. So then kept on going, north in France and Normandy, and they got out there. Went past Cornwall, okay, let's get out there. Uh, Wales and Ireland, even the um, Isle of Man. And the last one kept on going all the way to Scotland. So that's Billy's wondering, you know, who the good people from Scotland here? You know, in your, in your kilt and your things, and you know, they got off in Scotland, right? A lovely part of the world, right? July and August. <laughs> so yeah, the Celts. And uh, you know, it's, it's always the one that they say, in um, you know, Ireland is so green, and I don't know what it is right every day, but I hope that what we say here is be green here as well, you know? You know, goes went to you know, home in Ireland and uh, it only rained once. It was raining when we got off the plane. It was raining when we got to Canada as well. So that's, but last year we were there in June. Kathy, my wife, was here and it didn't rain once. And then they had the drought and everything. I'll show you something further on. Uh, but that was most unusual. You don't, you don't go to Ireland to get a town. Right? So here, what are you going to do? Oh, yeah. The so, dove, the dove. The Giants Causeway. Anybody know the Giants Causeway? Yeah. Beautiful place, uh, uh, 60 million years or something. Well, now that depends on all the people down in Alabama that would the world's not that old, obviously, right? According to the Bible, so anyway. Uh, New Range, New Range, Blue the Boina. Uh, show you that. Oh, yeah, catching up on through there, little budget. Uh, Fusion Marketing, true story, that's in Caddy. Oh, and yeah, here, for sailors, I have to throw something in. I mean, the, the friend was the one who discovered America. It wasn't that the one who was trying. Okay? I'm not too sure when, around 5, 425, 425. No, that's 500, 500. Is that. Hey, I heard a story about it on Shakespeare's Great Bard, and he died. Uh, yeah, and our greatest export, and it's not, uh, it's not famous. An Irish whiskey, proper whiskey. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Irish mammies, if they're the same as Italians or any, actually, mammies are mammies, right? And uh, yeah, a little bit of Dublin wish. They got um, yeah, some bad minds. So here you go, the Giant's Causeway, that's what it looks like. When we were there, Cathy, the year before last, it's up there in Northern Ireland. And uh, those basalt rocks, and then, uh, which I'll show you where it was born, man. Why is it bricks like that shape? <coughs> well, wait, wait. I tell you, you see, that's what I'm going to show you where it came from. And that was us, it was the year before last, right? It was pissing around, you can see the damn things wet. Everybody was wet, it was slippy, uh, but it was a warm, gentle rain, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and there, look, <coughs> there's the foot, you see? So, how did they get foot? And it was from cool, um, which you know, they screw up how to spell it. Uh, there's Barr's name after it, but it was, uh, it was an Irish joint called Fundal Cool and a Scottish joint, right? Yeah. And, and here, again, I say, here's how it got formed. How many people know this? True story, though. True story. Down. I need some uh, internet. Internet. <coughs> Bear with me a second. Anybody know what the password is for uh... Well,
Pick it up. 
poker top on it was uh, <coughs> knocked it down so there's bits of both sides. We had somebody last year showing the Scottish hand, but that fossil, as always I should say, rocks are there both sides. So that's um, so it was formed it was formed by joints, right? Yeah. Nothing to do with volcanic reaction or anything like that at all, you see. So that's just a true story. <laughs> they are exactly they all are. Yeah, if I can get this thing to work again. I go back to the PowerPoint, I think I'll stop there. The technology stuff. Hey. <coughs> yeah, so much for technology. This is um, down the road from where that joint's closed. Oh, yeah, here's Kathy. Uh, Carriker Reed Bridge. And uh, it looks fine until there's somebody walks behind you. Because uh, <laughs> if you were the only one on it, you'd be fine. But uh, there's different people are there behind you. You go up and down and side to side. It's, um, it's, it's, uh, I found that actually, if you have any stomach complaints, it frees you up very well. Actually. Uh, <laughs> so, <coughs> yeah, let me go back to I believe it is. Yeah, pyramids are only two and a half, two point four, something like that. And um, the sun goes through on the longest day. Uh, it goes from the gate entrance over there and all the way into the center. And they thought it was a burial mound, but actually now more and more they're thinking, as I say, it was more like a temple. And uh, still don't know exactly what it was for, but. Uh, burying kings and things like that. That's from the top looking down. And so the sun does, this. the sun will shine in through there and goes into the center uh, on the longest day of the year. So, you know, they knew something about uh, the rotation of the air pack. Well, it's over, what, 5,000 years ago now. And there's Nout and Doubt. There's a couple of other ones nearby. And there's one that haven't expected to have it on the excavation on that one, that's Doubt. And yeah, and then we'll try the technology. They last summer then with the drought, they found another one that looks huge, uh, with two walls on it, because this uh, all the grass is scorched. And so from on high they can see uh, the outline of something underneath and uh, start the excavation, yeah, but it, it's way bigger than the um, and the new range one it's in the same area so there's a, a number of them all around that area so 3200 bc and leprechauns those little things right pack yourself a leprechaun and uh <coughs> yeah they're not too sure again how these would have been in australia so it would be irish terms so laprogan which should be a shoemaker maybe it could be you know, hey, a small a small body uh, it could be a pygmy, and actually it was originally up in North Leinster, which is where Dublin's in Leinster area, where I'm from. And there's you know this, the story of the, the guy from California, and he's somewhere there in Ireland, and doesn't he trip up over a little leprechaun and catches him? And so if he captured a leprechaun, you get a wish. So the guy says, "Okay, well, what do you want?" He says, well, you know, I'm from San Francisco, the Bay Area, nice area. And uh, he says, but I love Hawaii. Only a constant arm and a leg to fly there. So, could I have a, 
So we have a road or a bridge you know, from some place on the west coast off to Hawaii. Now I can drive there at the weekend. And with every time that's and no, 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 you don't get this thing where you just like, you know, it has to be possible, you know. It has to be engineering possible. I can't do miracles, you know. So uh, but he says, listen, haven't we got up and over there in Canada the the Confederation Bridge there going with the PEA? I mean, so they can do that. He says, no, 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 you don't get it, just the continental divide or the continental shift when you go out off of the west coast of the States. So hold on, they have one there that uh, goes from uh, Denmark up to Sweden or something. Who's got that, you know? And there goes, no, oh, there's a freaking continental ship that, that, that drops down to here. And the guy says, well, hold on, hold on, they got North Sea oil, they got these things floating there, couldn't you? Put something that flows out that would, you know, that you could get a road, it's got to be possible. And then everyone says, well, look, look, when you go off the west coast, it just goes down for miles, miles. There's no way you could have anything anchored there, have anything bobbing there, it's just not possible. Pick something else, would you? Excuse me, my lady. And uh, the young thinks, uh, well, you know, I'm 35 years old, and uh, they all had a few relationships, but nothing safe, nothing lasted, you know? And he says, you know, I don't suppose he says, like, I'd really love to understand like, women's minds, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and the other guy says, what? He says, yeah, I'd like to understand women's minds. And the other guy says, uh, oh, is that a two lane or four lane holiday <laughs> walk? <laughs> true, true story, as I say. Uh, 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 actually, no, this one I do. Sir, what's your, yeah, sir, this, this one I have to show you. This one is, this is for every guy from Pali. This is the best thing I've seen. Okay, I would like to show this video. This is a, as long as we can hear and see the pictures. Of that. Yeah, can you get that up there? Thank you, what's your name? Stephen, thank you. He's a leprechaun. <laughs> There's no such thing as a perfect writer. This is why I use Grammarly to check my work. If I'm putting commas in... Please. <laughs> yeah. Hey, are you golfing today? Yeah. It's the second time this week. But you said it was fine. It is fine. It's perfectly fine. Are you confused by female behavior? <laughs> Wish you had a translator to understand what she means. Well, you're in luck. Introducing the Manslater, a revolutionary device that translates woman language into simple man words. Finally, the power to know what she means. Okay, cool. Let me just check my wife. Hey, babe, a tea time opened up later. You mind if I go? Fine. If that's what you want to do. Go, go! Stay home! On second thought, I think I'll just stay here with you and watch the notebook. Aww, how sweet. Now that's more like it. The Manslater uses emotion deciphering technology to help you out of the toughest jam. Hey, is everything okay? You sound upset. Why would I be upset? Oh, no way! <laughs> Happy anniversary, babe. You remembered. Of course I did. <laughs> Thanks to the Manslater's patented thumb logic processing chip, now any man can decode statements like... Are you wearing that? Okay, now! Hey, do you want to get some coffee? Do you want coffee? Do you think she's pretty? You think she's pretty? Oh, you're such a good friend. We never think you. I'm fine. I'll be ready in five minutes. Do whatever you want. Do not do what you want. Could you rub my shoulders a little bit? No, I'm a son. The man's later even works on men. Finally, women can learn the deeper meaning of his words. Oh. Your beauty is stunning. Hey, mind if I get to movie with the guys? You are a lovely, wonderful woman who meets all of my needs. And even though I will miss you, this night I wish to see Dan Cop lie in my brain. I'm fine. I'm fine. Really? Stop looking at me. The 
Manslater can even be customized, with voices of real celebrities being impersonated, like Yoda. And which trouble you are to the doghouse coach. Or Mr. T. I'm so get your man's later today. Clarity is just a phone call away. You need my man. <laughs> <All right. laughs> <laughs> Patrick, 385, 461. He was actually, uh, when he was nine, some, some Irish. Where's the mic? Oh, sorry. When he was nine, some Irish pirates ripped him off from Wales. He was in Wales and they brought him home over to Ireland to, to look after the things and whatever. And so he was enslaved for, I don't know, I think about 16 and he escaped. And when he was looking after the things and that, he, he had a vision that, uh, sent him off and he went when he got home he went back to he went to whatever it was called, uh preschool or something like that to um, become a priest and uh, came back to Ireland and so that's called the Celtic Cross. Right? So it's a cross with a circle in it. Now I see I call it a fusion marketing. So if he started off trying to compare the truths, you see. Uh, the Irish at the time, they worshipped the sun god because it was easy. There wasn't a lot to do, right? There wasn't too much sun to worship over there, so it was an easy one to do. You know, you didn't have to do too much, but that's why they picked it lazy, you see. But actually, I think it was quite smart. So, so they, thought they, they followed the sun god. And after not being able to convert anybody, uh, St. Peter, or St. Patrick came up with well, he had the cross, and he said, well, if I fuse in the sun, the circle with the cross, yeah, maybe that would attract some of them over. And it did, gangbusters, right? But that is, that, that is the true history of the uh, Celtic cross. It's the cross with the sun circle, and you'll see them all over the place in Ireland. So, you know, back in the 425 it out. So, yeah. Marketing. Anybody work, work in sales and marketing ever? Hey, right. you yeah, know, he saw he saw the opportunity. And uh paid for sale. I don't know. And he got paid per head or something or per soul or something like that. But anyway, that's that's the true story. That, is, that one is the true story of the Catholic Now Saint Brendan, <coughs> four eighty-four to five eighty seven. And um, we think it's around 510, 530, someplace in that region that he headed off and across the Atlantic. That's actually, so this is this is way back before churches. Church, church didn't really start until a bit later in Ireland. So they had those, um, what do they call the Catholic Yeah, the Catholic Hots, but they were churches, right? chapel type things, right? And that's the one near where uh, where he used to hang out. And it's still there in pristine condition. And there's a down the road from where we set off. There's a a little monument to remind people of it. And that's where that's the bay he would have left from. Can't you were there, right? That's the bay he would have left from. And that's the Atlantic heading off, and just you know a few whatever. A few strokes of the oar, and you're in America if you're in the It helps when you have a sail in some wind. And there's the guy who, uh, back in a number of years ago, himself and another guy, you can read a book, built a replica. And you know, what to say, a letter boat. Uh, that, that, that's all the details if you want to see anybody's looking for something to do over the winter. If you want to build something. You can get the schematic for it. And it only needs a bit of wood, wood and leather, or leather and wood, I should say, and uh, you know, a few nuts and bolts, I think, to be ground. And there it is, out there on the Atlantic. They did the two of them, did it, uh, to prove that it can be done. So 
the therapy that you know, Brendan the Navigator was the one who first found it, discovered it. America, as we say. Now Shakespeare, you know, the great bard. I don't know, they probably don't have Alan is from England there. Uh, I don't think they teach you this in um, school in England. But a true story anyway, we got told you see so the great bard dies and he gets to the curly gates knocks on the gates and St. Peter comes down and opens his up and he's ragged, he's more ragged, he says, all right, lad, sorry, you know, we're on a quota system here. One in, one down, a black dead or plague or something was going on, says, you know, we're building on an extension, we just, that's it, we're quota system, don't have time for the judgment shoot. I've been working 24 seven, I'm taking a break, getting my coffee, I'll be back in 15 minutes, you two decide, and the great bird goes, well, oh, he looks around. There's the paddy behind when he's in. So, as he's shutting the gaze, he hears St. Peter. St. Peter hears Shakespeare going, well, why don't we have the poetry writing competition? And then he goes, oh, sure, no problem at all, you know? And Peter's going, oh, my God, no, it's a great bird. Poor old Teddy doesn't have to open. So he says, okay, hang on, you two. It'll take you a few minutes. Up you. you get two minutes, and uh, you need some rules for this. So he says, um, four lines. This is English class. He four line iambic pentameter. Do you remember? Right? Yeah. Four line iambic pentameter. And then uh, with the word Timbuk two in it, at least once. Okay? Some people might have heard this true story before. <laughs> so <laughs> they go off they go off the two minutes, he calls them back and uh, Peter says, Who wants to go first? Well of course the great bar steps forward and says, Well I will. He says, Okay, off you go. So Shakespeare goes. The boy stood on the burning sands, a lovely flower in his hands. A caravan came passing through his destination, Timbuktu. St. Peter's gone, Jesus, no, no wonder they got on the great bird, you see. Hey, look at poor old Paddy, is your poor Paddy's gone? Ah, Jesus, no problem at all, you know. Off you go, Paddy. Paddy goes, well, Jesus, sure. Well, um, Tim and I were homeward bent. When we spied the three ladies in the tent, it was, it was three and we was two. So I booked one and two booked two. <laughs> Paddy got in, by the way. Paddy got in, right? Okay. Did I say, um, uh, this is um, this is the uh, Adel Zoni show. Yeah, no, right? uh, yeah, so Irish immigration. That's, that's the, uh, yeah, that is the biggest export from Ireland. There's been other all there to eat you, right? You know, there's only so much milk and cows and things you can do. Uh, there's only so much land. So, you know, there's a great place if you go to that one. It's new, the last couple of years. Happy guy, right? the epic, Thank you. epic uh, museum about the uh, immigration. Yeah, they say 1500 years that's been going on for uh, about 10 million left. Um, you know, seven, 70 million claims some sort of extraction to um, connection to Ireland. Uh, there's there's one down here in um, Arla Park. Arla Park, they got the other side of that. That's in the Liffey in Dublin. Uh, they got the Arla Park. It's, uh, it's near National Yacht Club, actually. And they got the same the person who made those statues. There's about half a dozen of them there. Uh, at one stage, yeah, at one stage there was, uh, there was something huge, it was like, I think it was the population of Toronto was, say, 20,000, and about over a number of years, 40,000. Paddy's came through and said, we should have stayed in the old then, but we didn't. <laughs> and they pissed off how they didn't all stay, they went to, to, down to the States and everywhere else, but yeah, there was a time in Toronto where, where the Paddy's had an origin. <coughs> And uh, <coughs> yeah, the, the famine years, and uh, Trevelyan was, uh, yeah, the, we, uh, during the famine years, uh, Ireland exported records, amounts of grain, beef, pork, you name it. Uh, one stage they, they started, they did immigrate, or sorry, they did import some maize, you know, basically cattle food from the States. Uh, to feed the, the starving people, but the, the good stuff was still export. Uh, anyway, won't go into too much about that one, but uh, and it was, as you can see, you know, 
And positively, no Irish or Catholics need apply. And that was just no Paddy's place, it was no Irish need apply. There's a bundle that does people argue about whether it's true or not, but it, it was. Yeah, and there, you know, I think hashtag me too would have a problem with that myself. You know? So, yeah. Um, I saw some places as well, it was there after the. They had it in Canada as well. You come to Canada back then and get some land as well. And yeah, the, the fields of Arton Rye, I'm not going to try and play it, but it's a great old song. And uh, it is the uh, Hey. But, yes, who knows it? By a lonely prison wall, I heard a young girl calling. I might go there taking you away. See, for you stole the Belgian's corn, because the Belgian wanted to export it. Anyway, it's a grand old song. Uh, and here, my family, there were five of the siblings, and uh, it was my, that's the oldest and the youngest. My sister is the oldest. Father, he's away at war, so actually he and his family speak Gaelic at home all the time. So you come over there, they'll be. And I've lost the but um, so he, he uses he speaks he be uh, he's a native speaker. And then I got Michael who works for Apple over in Silicon Valley. Nicholas is down in uh, Sydney, Australia, and here that's supposed to be Toronto someplace up there. So uh, out of five of us, three three left, and uh, and you know which is quite common. And yeah, there's one. Look, hey, here's a Odoir's, Odoir's Stout Ale. And look at that. It's better than pork, Madeira, or sherry. Cognac, brandy, nay, even champagne. Give us a stout or cork or old cork whiskey, such as the strength of Odoir's Stout Ale. The farmer, the tradesman, the indigent statement. The delicate lady, as well as the male. The plowman, the placeman, the pensioner, statesman, all show their approbation of Odoir's still nailed. Now, unfortunately it's no longer being produced so if I was to have another life and start a craft brewery I know what I'd be making anyway so. Now Irish whiskey versus Scotch whiskey, okay. Uh, this is, I'm not going to argue with you, you can have your preference, I'm not actually a whiskey drinker. Uh, but Ishkabaha is what it was called in Gaelic is Ishkabaha which means the water of life. Right? And uh, uh, she that was the story about poor old Paddy and he's uh, sailing around the world. Where's Michael? Michael, you know, could be back from Michael. Who knows Declan Armacal if he thought so. Yeah, that would get right. Anyway, he did get what well, we said he anyway, wasn't Declan, but some poor old Paddy anyway, you know, runs around stuck in this island by himself. Ten years. Ten years doesn't see anybody. And all of a sudden this day this this quite attractive lady come out with the wetsuit out of the water <laughs> and he can't believe his eyes and she says this is uh, when was the last time you had a drink about 10 years pulls the flask out and it's Irish whiskey and gives it to her and goes oh my god drinks it back nectar of the gods beautiful and she says uh, you smoke well they used to she likes it hers, love him. And she pulls out one of these oldies, you know, gives me likes it up and he goes, Oh my god, I've died and gone to heaven. And then she says to him, says, uh, you know, you like to play around? When was the last time? Ah, oh, Jesus, now don't tell me. You can't have it. No, you've actually got a set of golf clubs on Play or play around, you know. <laughs> you gotta have your priorities in life, right? Okay, so when one is whiskey, they, um, they say the Scots prefer to pronounce the Spanish K Y, so the Irish is K E Y. Don't know why. No? Anyway. Uh, so Scotch is distilled twice, whereas Irish is three triple distillation, so people say who are it. Or a place to drink whiskey is supposed to be a finer 
more refined, easier to taste. I say, I'm not really a whiskey drinker, but I knew there'd be some scotch for you to know. So I thought I'd piss you all off by showing this. <laughs> Uh, yeah, what's actually I do like um, Lagavulin and, and the fray is when you if your nose down if you put them up to your nose and just smell it you can smell the peat and we when we grew up we had peat out but you have peat in your bar sometimes it's a lovely smell and just the smell of it I just brings back you know the smells bring back memories so I do love the the, the peaty ones if we haven't had any yeah, the Irish don't it's a, it's kill and dried. They blend it, so actually the Scots one depends more on if you buy a Scotch, it's a lot more dependent on uh, the brewer, right? And their, their skill and how they mix things together. Whereas the Irish one, no, they just throw everything in, that's the pre-formulated things like that. Mm -hmm. And that's cost for at least two, whereas no, the Paddy's is at least three. So that's supposed to be the top. The differences, who are, who are Scotch drinkers in the room? Show of hands, Scotch drinkers, yeah? You know, would you would you be a traitor and have a, an Irish whiskey from time to time? Oh, you got bottle in the hand. Okay, right, there you go. You see, that's here. That's the other thing. That, oh, I'm you know, proud to be um, Canadian. How are we doing on time, actually? Oh, yeah, we got the awesome gear. Um, yeah, you know, you see, you know, when when you took citizenship, you know, that charter rights, right? You know, they discriminate based on color, so. I'll, I'll drink, yes, lager, ales, you know, no matter what color, don't discriminate, okay? Now, the Irish Mammy, some of the things, these are, now going through Dublin, if you go through, I actually like the ones, the Hong Kong, Shanghai Bank, when you go, go through the, the terminals here in Toronto, they have these great pictures. I was coming back from London at Christmas, and they have this stuff <laughs> hanging, they got these things. I'm gonna hang along as you're walking through the terminal. Oh, this is what they put up, not, not fancy art or anything like that, right? This is, I'm going only in big in Dublin, right? You know, I mean, some of these, it doesn't matter. It's not just the Irish mammy, it's any old mammy would be the same, right? You can sort of identify with some of them, right? At the little part. Now, that was my, so when my sister got married, I was 16, and uh, I remember the two aunts asked me, you're gonna miss your sister, and I go, what, that freaking rip? No, oh, but she was always, she was the birdie, was always telling Nami when I was getting into trouble. You know? And we get on fine now, Kathy, don't we? But that's, that's a number of years later, but no, she was, I was always getting in trouble, don't figure. I'm not falsely accused of them, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And hey, when I was your age, I sure was lucky if I got a jam sandwich. You remember, wasn't it? On the white bread, right? Jam sandwich, that was like, that was great stuff, wasn't it? Right? In school, in the schools, we have John's Harvard for lunch that you, you got. Yeah, yeah, sure. Well, I opened it for you. You always open my letters, yeah. And the uh, top ten list, you see? Yeah. You fall off and break your leg. Don't come on to me. Right, and, well, the other one, my mom was a nurse, so actually, yeah, here, any, any, any nurses or doctors in the room? No? 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 Jeez. So, Mammy went over and that. Uh, First week of January 1939, the Guy's Hospital. The Guy's Hospital in London was one of the oldest hospitals around. January 1939, now what happened in September 1939? Right? She was there for 10 years. So, and we were, you know, we're Southern Ireland, you can work out what the hell we were brought up. Uh, on Christmas Day, though, we would be one of the few Southern, Southern families. Like when we got the telly, there were two things you had to watch on Christmas Day. Pope's speech and the Queen's speech. Right? So yes, Mammy was definitely a royalist. And uh, I, I looked, the thing, I watched the Queen's speech this year as well. She took the piss out of Charles you know, <laughs> and some others. They said, yeah, yeah, this is, is a, yes, some people, you know, as they get older, they get wiser. But not them all. <laughs> it was a direct stab of it, and she said something to somebody else as well. Anyway, I, was, I thought she was great. And God bless her, I mean, come on. She is, I do, I've got total respect for that lady, you know? And, uh, yeah, and I have, hey, with some of my fellow Paddies here, I said, here's one for you now. I said, there's a thing in that I used to be an accountant, I thought they had, had therapy all over it. Uh, but I still pay the damn fees. 
I wish you become a chair of it, you know, I'm giving the damn thing up. But it is, um, and how do you tell, any accountants in the room? Yeah. And engineers are similar, actually. Engineers, the more said than engineers. Yeah. Well, we, we pick on, pick on accounts, because you all laugh, always, always laugh at yourself. How do you tell an extroverted accountant from an introverted one? The extroverted one looks at your shoes when he's talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> Now, um, yeah, you think I made money? Yeah, okay, we saw that one. Yeah, we're part of all that, don't you understand? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's that one again, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know that one, yeah. I told you once, I told you a thousand times. That's, I can hear my mommy saying all these things, you know. Yeah, what do you think this is a hotel? Or, you know, I'm not your way, pick it up yourself. So, I start, yeah, stop running down those stairs there. Yeah. Are your hand broken? Now, Dublin, Dubliners, now, okay, every city has, uh, when we were in, Kathy and I met in London, and uh, London, Ontario, and there's East Adelaide, West of Adelaide, right? In Ireland, or Dublin, the Dublin, there's the North Siders and the South Siders. Okay, I'm the South Sider, okay? We're biased. And so, the North Siders, you know, it's like, what's the difference between, you can pick any city or town you want, you probably, you can translate these, some of these things are international. Is that, uh, what's the difference between a, a North Sider, a North, North Sider and Batman? Batman can go into town without Robin. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what do you call, what do you call a North Sider in a suit and tie? The accused. <laughs> but, uh, so, Molly Malone, actually she's no longer, that's outside Trinity, they moved her around to Andrew Street, I know. Um, but uh, Molly Malone, so these are what is locally known around. Uh, all, all of these famous statues have, uh, have local names for them. <laughs> I'm not politically correct, okay? I apologize, right? <laughs> oh, dear. Oscar Wilde, right? This is, I say, totally not politically correct, but this is, this is, and that's a colored one. It's like, it's a nice, it's a nice statue. <laughs> he was gay, right? Or, no, he wasn't, he was a bisexual. God bless me. Double the market size. <laughs> This is, this is, I know, this is disgraceful, you know, I'm sure you get the hell of that. I know here, Anna Livia, she wasn't busy, she was, they're supposed to represent the river, the river Livia, they moved her from O'Connell Street, put the spire in actually, I forget the where they moved her to, but. That's another one. This one, I don't get this one, I, actually, I like this one, but they, and they only have one name for them as well, I can you imagine. Yeah. Now, this thing. This thing, it's, uh, it's uh, oh, some freaking monstrosity, you know, anyway. <laughs> we got, we got lots of names for it. Nail in the veil, that's very good. Nail in the veil. Oh yeah, now you see, here's, here's one in them. Um, and actually, so I spent them um, for some reason. So my parents, we were a first generation city. So um, every summer, and, and my mother in particular was a bit worried about me. So school would end on a Friday. I'd be in the car on a Saturday and dump with my aunt and uncle's farm for the summer, right? And school would start on a Monday. I'd be back usually on a Sunday. The odd time on a Saturday, not put that, that an extra day to get in the trouble back in the city. And then uh, during the first time, I was like four or five. And uh, you know, I know how to milk cows, which this was before. We didn't have fancy milking machines, you had your hands, right? And slop out from the cows and the pigs, and the pigs had a litter, so they were there like the first day I'm there. And I come running into my aunt, because they had the, the vet was castrating the, the little bonnets, right? The little piglets. I come running in, 
Gary, 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 they're cutting the Mickeys off the bottoms, they're cutting the Mickeys off the bottoms, right? Because that's, that's what the kids work for, whatever, you can work it out yourself, right? So, uh, and, and, and so in, we live, my sister now, we live, uh, my sister lives in Stillorgan in Dublin, and Stillorgan is, we, is colloquially known, uh, Morrow means dead, so it's, you know, we call it Mickey Morrow. Right, over, over, over Mickey Oh, yes, okay. Over Mickey Yeah, right. Over Mickey There you go. Right, but Mickey Mara is a slag one, like these things here. So, this one here, I'm out with Mickey. Right? <laughs> I don't know how to explain that. The Galloping Green Pub is there. So. Yes, been there. Been there. Once or twice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, many times. Been there. <laughs> I have. <laughs> Trouble is, it's a little friggin' highway, or it's, you know, it's not an easy place to. No. Right, but now it's um, well, they don't have Uber there, unfortunately. They have it in England, in London, it's great. And uh, oh, James Joyce, right? Mm. <laughs> 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 and now that one, and I can't, I'd, I would, I'd be showing you the whiskey in the jar and the boys are back in town, fiddle in it, right? Yeah. And there, that's across from them because I see it all the time at Christmas when we meet over here in McDade's pub. So you know my face? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I see him every year, every Christmas. I remember King Street, uh, uh, Sir McDade's, when the Dubliners used to be there. Okay, yeah, yeah. And with sawdust on the floor. And yes. That was, and that was a very upscale. Uh, I, I was there, I was there once and that, uh, I don't know, it's pretty old culture. <laughs> uh, I'm going to get myself in trouble. Um, George Best, anybody who follows soccer, this guy was one of the most naturally talented people going, but he sort of. Well, he drank cans of dry. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, no, here, no, here, 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 here's one for you. But that's in there, you know. Nice enough afterwards. You know. <laughs> 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 or, or this one. <laughs> no, that, that was a bit of all right as well, you know. So, um, yeah, and the Six Nations, uh, look, rugby is better, so that's on, that's on now. We're into it. Uh, the Six Nations, uh, the, the rugby's. And, and one thing about it, you see, the guy said it is true, you know, rugby is a, uh, was it a ruffian sport played by gentlemen. Yeah. And soccer is a gentleman's sport. Played by the ruffians, and and it is interesting. The internationals, it, the internationals, so they alternate. So you know, Scotland will play Dublin one year, and then Dublin will won't play them in Edinburgh the next year. They alternate back, and the whole the two teams, no matter which ones are, they all go out with their spouses and that for dinner that night after the game. And it's, it's the same with the, the fans, it's basically who can tell the best jokes and who can sing the loudest. And, and you don't get people fighting at, Sham, at rugby matches like the soccer hooligans. No disrespect meant to the, but there's some of those I wouldn't be going to, to some of those um, soccer matches you've taken your life in your hand for God's sake, right? Um, yeah. I'm just finishing, finishing work there, you know. <laughs> Uh, I just, uh, I was telling, I have some, I have some guests here, there's, there's three, three over there at the back, and I says, listen, hey, with you three there, you brought the average age of this room down by about 50 freaking years. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh yeah, where, that's there. But yeah, but it says, a friend of mine said, well, Oscar, we put it in my head, now I can't get rid of it. It says, no, you know, you hit a certain age and, uh, and you go, okay, you know, I can see the end of the runway, you know. And the other one is like, once you hit 50, when you wake up in the morning, you don't have a pain, I'm ah, sure you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's, that's uh, uh, there is the one on the soccer, on the soccer one, um, and again, Billy Connolly, Sir, Sir Billy Connolly. Um, you see, you know, there's the wee Scottish fan at the soccer match, and it's Celtic and Rangers, right, who are notorious. Um, and uh, he's a wee little Celtic fan, and doesn't he end up in the wrong, the wrong end of the stands with all these big, all these big Ranger ruffians, you see? And uh, the shit on Celtic and win the first goal, and he's going, yeah, and then he realizes, and a hand on his shoulder says, hey, Jimmy, 
Don't get this a bottle. Uh, excuse me, trying the accent. I apologize for that, but master boys in it, right? And uh, just bang, poor little, little Taddy's cup. The guy says, Oh, great, get the hell out of here. Now, leave your shoe. Leave one shoe. So off he goes, comes back with the bottle, right? Puts his foot into the shoe and squash, isn't there a jobby in it, you know? <laughs> anyway. So, you know, another 20 minutes later, the uh, Celtic score on another goal. And he's going, ah, oh, shit, no. <laughs> so the other guy says, hey, Paddy, get the bottle and leave the other shoe. <laughs> he does, he comes back, squash, right? Anyway, squash at home, and the, the BBC are doing some. Uh, Show we see it, and I says, "Excuse me, sir, could you would you have a moment where I'm at the BBC?" I says, "We're talking about soccer hooliganism. We're wondering will soccer hooliganism ever end?" And little Paddy himself says, "Ah, no, no. As long as they're doing jobbies in our shoes and we're pissing in their bottle, I don't think it will." <laughs> hey, that's that's it. Thank you. All right. Do we have any questions or comments? <laughs> well, I would like to say thank you so much, John. Oh, that I get was, the pin. I get the pin. You get the pin. Oh, you get the pin. Okay. A little token of our appreciation. Beautiful. Let's give John just another warm shout out. Thank you. And thank you particularly for squeezing us in between meetings. I know you have to rush now. Oh, he's got to finish his pint. I'm actually, it's a, I'm doing, it's a freebie. It's a great, um, it's great, a great not, it's a great not for profit. They changed the name, which is called Windmill Micro Engine, but actually it was called the Immigration Access Fund Canada. And like, we're all friggin', unless you're into the indigenous, we're all immigrants someplace or And they give loans to immigrants, to new immigrants, to try to help them validate foreign mechanics, electricians, plumbers. They do get the odd dentist and the odd doctor, but most of those don't have themselves, right? And that's, they give loans, and actually one of their key things is before and after, on average, these, their income goes up by a factor of three. Because most of them are, you know, doing nighttime security, or whatever, minimum wage and things like that. So I'm just doing some more volunteer work with them. It's not, it's not really work, but it's great. So they do a great thing. Nice. Right? What's the name of the organization? Uh, it's now called Windmill Micro Lending, but it was Immigrant Access Funds Canada. Okay. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. Thank you, John. And next week, uh, we have Martha Henderson, who will share her experiences with Disabled Sailing. She's on the board for that organization. And then upcoming, uh, the following week, we have Rob Mazza, who will this time review the inductions into the Canadian Sailing Hall of Fame. And with that, I'm safe.